A tribute to Daniel Brühl, the most talented polyglot actor in the industry. This article has been written by Samuel James Parvin. Sie sind ganzen Dreck, die zusammengepfercht Menschenmengen. Keiner kennt keinen, die Massen in den Kaufhäusern, die gleichgeschaltet wie so Roboter die Rolltreppen runterfahren. Daniel Brühl is a familiar face that still does not hold the star power he deserves. A breakdown and bio of the polyglot actor and his most famous roles. Acting is a craft and an art form, and in any medium of art, there are layers of interpretation, immersion, and bending and altering your skill to fit either figurative or literal canvas. Qu'est-ce que vous appelez un perchoir? Ah. Un perchoir, c'est comme ça qu'un tireur en busquet appellerait un clocher. Structure haute, offrant une vue à 360 degrés. Many actors in their careers eventually take on roles designed to bring them outside of their comfort zones. Whether that be performing in a different language, a different accent, or historically a different gender. Although it is difficult and time consuming to hire language and dialect coaches to teach said actors new languages or accents for roles that could easily be played by fluent foreign language speakers. Although he is shamefully not a household name yet, those who still want star appeal to take on this kind of role can look no further than the familiar face of Daniel Brühl, who is always prepared to show up and save the day or destroy it, depending on the part he's needed for. You know, a With a filmography that dominates both cinema and television alike, Daniel Brühl is a filmistic chameleon able to bend and form to any character he pleases. Actually, it's called Ravi again. It's yoga in the kitchen. Whether that be a French Michelin star rated restaurant owner in Berndt, an Austrian Formula One driver in Rush, a German soldier in World War II in Glorious Bastards, or even a Sokovian father turned Avengers manipulating supervillain in Captain America Civil War and the Falcon and the Winter Soldier. My father lived outside the city. I thought we would be safe there. Brühl's background and early life make him a catch-all for international and national roles, specializing in those that may require many different languages. This polyglot actor doesn't stop at learning new dialects. He is a brilliant artist and can span the range from protagonist to antagonist with poise and grace. Phil. Are you the director? Yes, I am. No way. Do you live in Siena? Uh, I've been here about six months. It's lovely. A brief history of Daniel Brühl. Born in Barcelona, Spain, and then moved away at a young age to Cologne, Germany. Daniel's Spanish mother and German father taught their kids to speak their native languages of German and Spanish at home. I remember the day when the director came to Budapest, who came with this weird thing. Then, after learning English in school, Brühl became trilingual. Throughout his adolescent and young adult life, mastered French, Portuguese and the Latin-derived language Catalan, making Brühl a true polyglot. But there will be others, I have no doubt. And from them we might one day learn what compels a man to do. He began his acting career at the young age of 17 years old on a German soap opera, Verboten Liebe. Arschgeige! Charlie macht sowas nicht! But he did not gain international recognition as a performer until 2003 for the Golden Globe nominated film Goodbye Lenin. <laughs> This German film showcased Brühl's character, Alex Kerner, an East German son of a mother who fell into a coma while the Berlin Wall fell in 1989, leading Alex to do what he could keep up, the illusion of a separated country for the sake of his mother's health. Building a career through German, French and Spanish filmography, Brühl finally broke into American cinema with a substantial role in Quentin Tarantino's Inglorious Bastards in 2009. No, 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 no. 
Mademoiselle n'est pas ma petite amie. Though the Hollywood gates seemed to be opening for Brühl, he had a tough time maintaining critical success in his films until Rush, directed by Ron Howard, released in 2013, starring Brühl as an Austrian Formula One driver alongside his future fellow MCU actor Chris Hemsworth. The MCU Golden Ticket came to fruition for Brühl in 2016 when Baron Zemo, the iconic villain of Marvel Comics, was given his cinematic debut in Captain America the Winter Soldier, who then reprised his stint as MCU villain in the recent The Falcon and the Winter Soldier television series on Disney+. If none of these rang any bells, some may also recognize Brule from his role in The Alienist, a TV series that had a two-season run and featured him as a German expert in mental pathologies surrounding deranged killers in 1896 New York. Bernie Of course you know that. Daniel Brühl is an artist who has had many roles and taken on a vast array of characters. So I'm sure you've seen him somewhere. The perfect casting of Baron Zemo. An empire toppled by its enemies can rise again. Perhaps his most recognizable role is that of Marvel's Baron Zemo, the Sokovian native turned Avengers foe in Captain America Civil War. The trait that made Zemo so special was that he did not have any superpowers at all. In fact, the only weapon that he used to his advantage was patience. Did it. He believed that with enough patience and time, a man could achieve anything and that he did. Zemo's driving force came from the vengeance he placed on the Avengers after they failed to stop Ultron an artificial intelligence created by the Avengers who destroyed Zemo's city, killing his family in the process. He used research and manipulation to successfully turn Iron Man and Captain America against each other and simply watch the rest come roll down. No matter what we judge. Mission report, December 16, 1991. He then returned as Zemo five years later in the new show, The Falcon and the Winter Soldier reprising his role, yet this time acting as more of an anti-hero. His character wound up being one of the highlights of the show, and it even seemed like the ending of the series set up a future for his career. Zemo does not necessarily add much to the Falcon and the Winter Soldier series in terms of developing the plotline, but it is vital that he is there for the arc of Bucky Barnes. As the person who was linked to Bucky's past, formerly using his brainwashing to equip him as a weapon in his first against the Avengers, he is now there to provoke Bucky and remind him of who he once was. This is also that Bucky could finally get to a place where he is evolved by the end of the season. Zemo is unpredictable, but he is also indispensable to Sam and Bucky with all of the knowledge he can offer to them. The Nazi. Those days are over. I know. The way Brule plays his complex character throughout the series, letting us trust him while still being wary, sometimes giving the audience clues as to his real motives, and sometimes keeping us at arm's length, is truly inspired. Didn't take much for him to fall back into form. In the same rank as Loki or Thanos, Baron Zemo stands as one of the MCU's most well thought out villains thanks to Daniel's performances. But unlike the other gods and aliens that the Avengers fight, Zemo being just a normal man with lots of patience grounds him immensely, making him fight within the realism of the show, but also making it all the more impressive that this villain stands as one of the most memorable in the cinematic universe. Although Zemo is one of the best villains in the MCU, it is the casting of the actor that was genius. Creating and immortalizing a character who is from a fictional place is by no means an easy task. Sokovia was originally created as a country in Central Europe between Slovakia and the Czech Republic. This is why Daniel Brühl was perfect for the role. As a German actor who has played characters from all around Europe, he was able to bring a blend of Slavic and Germanic accents and cultural backgrounds to his villainous role with ease. I really think I'm invaluable. Shut up. There. Persevering with the cards he was dealt. Daniel Brühl has played a lot of Nazis. 
Although he is ripe to take on any role, a skill proven by his vast contrasting characters in his career timeline, once he broke into the American Hollywood industry, the types of roles he was offered seemed one and the same. In Inglorious Bastards, he played a Nazi soldier in the 2010 British-Russian film. In Transit, he also played a Nazi soldier. But luckily, he was able to mildly step out of the typecast for his role in The Zookeeper's Wife, where he played a Nazi zoologist. A terrible thought, I know, and a personal nightmare for me, but I must tell you, the Allied forces are very weak. I expect this to be over very soon. Because of the American perspective on German history, Brühl was subject to many roles where he played members of some sort of antagonist group, if not acting as the main villain of the story. At this point, it was primarily in his early German work or his roles where he played a Frenchman or Spaniard where he was able to capture a character the audience was instructed to root for. They may place a fork on the floor under the table to see if you notice and they wouldn't drop it because that could make a noise and make it too easy. He went from consistently playing the love interest to playing the villain. That is not an actor's arc that is commonly seen. Yet he took this in stride, channeling his craft to make multi-dimensional anti-heroes with complex perspectives out of substandard antagonists who only serve the plot to be an obstacle for the hero. Although there were some opportunities for him to showcase his range of sultry and charming. For example, his role as restaurant owner Tony Bilardi in 2015's Burnt, where he played an old friend of star Bradley Cooper's character, Adam Jones, adding an extra dose of beauty and light to the film's aesthetic mise-en-scene. Order for David Lane. I'm with a friend. It's her birthday. I want a cake. No, no cake. You're a chef. You can make eggs, right? Daniel Brühl has won five European awards for his role in Goodbye Lennon, Elephant Heart and Lovin' Thoughts. The actor 2003 is Daniel Brühl in Goodbye Lennon. And five Hollywood-driven awards such as Screen Actors Guild, Critics' Choice Awards, etc. for his performance in Inglorious Bastards. If you're looking to expand your movie taste into the European sector, it is worth filtering your list by those that include work by this highly decorated artist with such a wide range of skills in both linguistics and performance. It is a shame that Brühl has been primarily pigeonholed in one type of role. This brilliant actor deserves more recognition and I would love to see the unique skills he brings to the table be utilized by a filmmaker with proper vision. You can see Daniel Brühl in the upcoming prequel to the Kingsman movie franchise, The King's Man. Fire <laughs> of revolution. Yes, my shepherd. And hopefully he will be reprising his role as Baron Zemo in the newly announced Marvel film that just began development, the unnamed fourth installment of Captain America. Supercharged. <laughs>